Okay, this is currently a 12 volt system. You have the battery cables coming in, positive, negative. The inverter, the power supply is coming out to the different lines. This is the charge controller where you can maintain and see what's actually happening with the batteries, how much power is going into them, everything like that. The leads in from the batteries come here, the leads in from the panels come here. All right, these are 12 volt chargers that I can hook up if uh, power is low. I can hook it up to the generator and recharge the batteries, but all this is getting changed over to 48 volt now. All right, I probably should have taken a full video when this is all wired together, but before, this is the negatives, these are the positives right here. So it's just wire, 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 and then these were all cooked together and then over into this box it led over and those were all hooked together and those were all hooked together. To change it over to the 48, I'm actually wiring diagonal. All right, so I will show you that when I'm done with it. Okay, it's early morning, but we got the uh, solar panels producing here. Batteries are getting the charge. The flashing green light says it's charging. Then you have the going into the house. And this is the wiring. So you have coming in from the batteries here. Going in into the inverter charger here. You have the panels. Those wirings going in here. All your AC is coming out into these junction boxes and then out into all the different breakers and each one's individually wired up to the breaker. This one is the AC uh, main in from the generator. Um, I've been having a couple issues with that flipping the breaker uh, but I'm gonna work th on that a little bit more but so far it looks a lot cleaner a lot more organized and it's been really producing a lot of power for us. So probably need to expand the solar panels, but the actual inverter charger is pretty cool. It has a lot of different settings. You can go in here and set how you want uh, it to uh, run or discharge. You can go up, set the battery types, which one is going to uh, supply the house first, all that. And then I can go over here into the settings and actually see what's happening, uh, how much you're producing that day. Real time what you're pulling. So right now we're pulling 52 watts. Uh, we got a fan running and some lights and uh, the modem for the internet. So initially I had an issue with uh, when I hooked up the solar panels, the new inverter charger wasn't detecting it. And I discovered that the operating uh, voltage had to be at least 120. So to reach that, after reading each tag on the solar panels, I'll show you these tags right here, I was able to calculate that I needed to string them in a large series, which is positive to negative, positive to negative, positive to negative, until you have one negative and one positive coming out, and that goes over into the house, into that inverter charger. This is a supplemental charger. It's a 48 volt uh, golf cart battery charger. These are my battery banks. Keep them in the tuppers just so they don't get rained on and weathered. You'll notice the 48 volt setup, positive to negative, positive to negative, positive to negative. You're left with one positive here and one negative up there. Okay? And then I go from positive on this chain to this positive. Again, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative and then left with one negative over there, combine the two negatives and the two positives. And then that feeds into the house. 
with the 48 volt system you can use the smaller gauge wire like this one right here but I wanted to daisy chain all the batteries with that the thicker one gauge that I already had some of these batteries I've had for a little bit all the batteries over here uh, I bought at the same time uh, they're just Everstart Marine RV deep cycle batteries uh, I got the 29 DC uh, 845 uh, cranky amps so what does this all mean in general what it comes down to is that operating on a 12 volt system you have to use a lot larger gauge wire because it's producing a lot more amps the conversion going from 12 volt all the way up to 120 volt is a very big jump okay when you're going from 48 volt to 128 120 volt it's not that big of a jump so you can use smaller gauge wire that can save you some money didn't really save me some money because we started off with the 12 volt system first however the things that I've noticed particularly and this is the most important for me is that the system seems to charge faster if I have to supplement with our predator generator to charge on the days when it's overcast or raining they tend to charge the battery bank a lot faster the depletion or the discharge rate tends to be a lot slower on the 12 volt system if I ran a fan all night long on those hot nights you know where I needed to stay cool for us to sleep properly by the time early morning set in my batteries were either gone or alarming that they were at the discharge rate where they were maximized on the 48 volt system I haven't experienced that yet and we have been running a lot of things I still run the gener uh, the refrigerator on the same time cycle uh, I was even running a fan that I have you saw that fan that I put underneath the house that pulls that cold air into the house uh, during the summer and I can reverse to put the hot air that we're producing from the heater under the house to keep the pipes from freezing that fan and a dehydrator and the um, and the refrigerator going so it's actually been producing pretty well uh, on average uh, the solar panels what they're reading is uh, about a 2.7 kilowatt production okay of that we're only using about 0.5 now I do feel like I need to expand these these solar panels right now I'm producing 1500 watts I'd be a lot happier if it was 3000 but that costs money so right now I'm not in a position where I can expand that but that's something to see for the future I feel like if I expand the solar panels that'll produce and cover all my needs for in the house as well as make sure to get an extra charge into the battery bank I'm not an expert in elect in electricity or anything like that uh, I've watched a lot of YouTube videos okay I did a lot of research um, ended up having to do a lot of math to get this to work because uh, I had to calculate the the voltage and everything like that from the solar panels and then figure out how to wire those series versus parallel all right in the end I ended up having to run an entire series through my panel because that's what added up to the over the 120 volts that this new inverter charger needed to produce and to charge and to detect those solar panels I haven't been able to hook up my wind turbine because that's still a 12 volt turbine I do have a box that I bought that is supposed to take a, a 12 volt and jump it up to 48 volt my main concern is that the charge controller for the wind turbine might still be reading that 48 volts on the way back and not produce the charge it's supposed to now I do have one other box that steps 48 down to 12 that's right here that one is for the water pump that supplies the house with the water pressure and for our use it's for showers for the sink all that that has been working flawlessly and I see that it takes less time for 
the water pump, the 12 volt water pump, to recharge the system and cut itself off with the pressure tank now that we're on the 48 volts. So just some interesting observations, but that's how we're improving our stuff day by day. Thanks for turning in and uh, I'll see you next time. Thank you.